you have said the uh, the stream URL, I assume. Uh, I think Muhammad has said that. Okay. Let's see. Okay, I, I think I fixed it now. You have said the the stream URL. I assume. Uh, I think Muhammad has said that. Okay. Okay, Ah, I, I yeah. think I fixed it now. Yes, I think it's uh it's live streaming. Can anyone check on YouTube? Because I I think I heard myself. So. Okay, so, uh, okay, it's live on YouTube, great. Yeah, so yeah, thanks Rakesh. So I think we will start the first uh, meeting of this PNSD and Bender course in this semester. So yeah, um, hello everyone, uh, I'm Hao Song Luo. Uh, I'm a PhD student at the Safari Research Group at uh, ETH Zurich uh, under supervision of Professor Onumutlu. So this will be the first uh, lecture of uh, our PNS DRAM Banner course in this semester, where I will be giving an introduction to the course, its logistics, and some uh, basic background about a DRAM. So in this course, uh, you will learn in detail how modern DRAM chips operates. You will learn how to characterize DRAM uh, with hands-on experience by using an FPGA-based DRAM characterization infrastructure that we build uh, with DRAM Bender. You'll use DRAM Bender to develop your own experiments on DRAM, and uh, you will gain hands-on experience in studying DRAM characteristics. So the goal of this PNS course is to improve your knowledge in computer architecture, especially in memory systems. you will um, gain technical skills in uh, characterizing DRAM using real DRAM devices, and you will develop critical thinking and analysis skills uh, by designing your experiments, uh, proposing hypotheses, and then verify your uh, the results with uh, your analysis skills. And finally, you will gain some familiarity with some of the key research directions in memory systems with a focus on DRAM. And of course, in the end, you will um, need to do a technical presentation uh, of your project. So um, uh, uh, we will assign you uh, at least two um, supervisors for each of you. Uh, okay, I think someone else is joining. Yes. So for every project, we uh, we will assign you two supervisors. So they, they will be in close contact with you that you can always communicate with and have discussions with. So this should also improve your communication skills. And yeah, the key goal is to study real memory chips with an FPGA-based DRAM infrastructure to gain new insights into DRAM. Um, there are, are, of course, some prerequisites of the course. So you should have taken, uh, let's say, digital design and computer architecture or any equivalent course uh, as uh, that covers the basics of computer architecture. And you should be... Um, familiar with at least uh, C++ and or Python. So C++ will be the major interface, the uh, language that you will use to uh, write uh, DRAM banner programs, and Python will be uh, heavily used to write scripts to drive the experiments and also collect and analyze results. And you should also have basic knowledge of Uh, version control system, uh, how to uh, remotely access uh, an, uh, another PC, and you should be able to be comfortable with 
uh, working uh, in uh, the uh, a Linux OS without a graphical user interface. So you should be able uh, to feel comfortable um, with discovering um, why things work or uh, not, and as well as solving problems. And you should also be interested in uh, low-level hacking and how uh, the memory systems work in general. And uh, if you have experience uh, with Verilog and uh, developing some projects, we will also provide you with some uh, potential projects if you're interested in uh, improving DRAM Bender itself. So first, uh, I will give a brief introduction um, uh, about the course. So uh, the principal investigator uh, of our research group, Professor Ernie Mutlu, uh, he is a uh, full professor at uh, ETH, and he was a faculty member at Carnegie Mellon University, and he got his PhD from University of Texas at Austin. Uh, in computer architecture, and he has industry uh, experience with Google, VMware, Microsoft Research, Intel, and AMD. Um, so here is his uh, website. You, you can get a lot of information about uh, the ongoing research, the other courses he has taught, and also uh, all the uh, publications by our group. And if you want to reach Professor Mutlu, uh, the Gmail address is always the best way to reach him. And we maintain a, a list of uh, 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 potential uh, projects. If you want to do a semester project, bachelor thesis or master thesis, uh, you can always go to this page and uh, and drop us an email if you're interested. So the uh, current research and teaching topic in our group is mainly in computer ar uh, architecture. Uh, we have a strong focus on memory and storage systems hard, uh, and hardware security. And uh, uh, of course, another big research topic here is uh, bioinformatics. So uh, do, uh, during this course, uh, we will be the main supervisors that will uh, provide you with detailed assistance, instructions, and help uh, on your projects. So, uh, yeah, once you have chosen or been assigned projects, we will, uh, yeah, you will get to know us much better. So this is our group. Uh, and yeah, as uh, I have said before, uh, our main research focus is in computer archite architecture with a emphasis on memory, memory and storage systems. So um, the first homework that you, uh, you'll be doing is to submit homework zero. Basically, it's, it, it, it's a simple questionnaire that uh, will let us know about your background, your interest, and your, the reason for your joining this uh, PNO, uh, at the, this PNS course. Of course, if you have a strong interest in working with us, you. You can also express these intentions in the um, homework. So some lo uh, logistics. Um, so at, uh, attendance uh, of the meetings is required for all the meetings. So we will have the second meeting where we discuss all the potential projects uh, next week. And we will send out a, a questionnaire or like a doodle survey that kind of things to decide on uh, a time slot that works for the most of us. And that will also be the uh, time slots for all the future meetings. And besides these like, um, uh, let's say regular meetings, um, we will also have uh, one on one weekly update meetings that you will uh, carry out with your supervisors. And uh, and when you choose to do it uh, is uh, completely uh, on the arrangements between you and your supervisor. Uh, these 
these weekly updates meetings are very important because it uh, enables us to uh, understand your progress, to um, know if you have any challenge. So please um, arrange these, uh, arrange and attend these meetings as as much as possible, uh, and also ask questions. Uh, tell us your uh, difficulties or challenges in the projects, so we can um, uh, continuously make sure that there's always progress uh, as we uh, go. Yeah, then you should study the learning the le uh, le learning materials, which we will uh, introduce later in these meetings, and every student should uh, do the uh uh, uh the projects because that's what the pianist course is is about yeah participation is very important you should be proactive in engaging with uh your supervisors you should ask questions and contribute to the uh uh discussion to the designing of the experiments and analyzing the results so although we will help you uh in these aspects but you should not expect but like that we will do the project uh for you and it will be very good uh if you can read some relevant papers to understand um uh a border aspect of uh past and current research uh in memory systems and dram yeah so here's our course website you can get um, more logistics about the course and you should be checking your email frequently for any announcements, uh, especially uh, like on the topics of the regular weekly meetings or um, yeah, uh, and on a regular basis, we, uh, we will have some milestone meetings to make sure everyone has achieved some progress. So keep an eye on your inbox and uh we we will clearly mark uh the email with the tag PNS Dira Bender Spring 2024. So yeah, in this meeting you should um yeah, after this meeting, you should uh get your hands on with these required materials. We have a DRAM Bender tutorial a paper describing DRAM Bender, uh, an example uh, study that uses DRAM Bender to comprehensively characterize and demonstrate another re-disturbance phenomenon other than uh, row hammer. Uh, and also, you sh uh, finally, you should go to the public repository of, of DRAM Bender to get yourself familiarized with the high-level uh, code structure and organization of the projects. And if you're interested, if you are, um, um, or, uh, of course, if you uh, have more time, you can always go to these recommended materials to uh, have a sense of what other study can be done with DRAM Bender and its predecessor, SoftMC. So in the second meeting, um, we will announce uh, a list of potential projects, as well as with some brief introduction that you can choose from. Um, and after this, you will have a week to submit your preferences uh, among these uh, predefined projects. And of course, uh, if you have your own ideas, we are more than welcome to uh, hear about your own project uh, ideas. Uh, and of course, if you have any question and if you want to know whether a project fits your current uh, skill set and uh, background knowledge, uh, please write to us uh, in email so that we can uh, help you in choosing the projects. And it's very important that you can um, study the required materials so that you have a better understanding of what you will be doing uh, in the rest of the semester. So we have a, a, a tentative weekly schedule for the course. So in this uh, meeting in week zero, we will give the brief introduction to the course, the logistics, and a quick introduction to DRM Bender. Uh, uh, the, uh, the next meeting, uh, uh, 
we uh, uh we will um present to you the list of uh available uh projects and uh afterwards for every week we will invite the um authors of some of the key uh research works that involves experimental DRM characterization to uh, present their work so you can gain an understanding of um how these infrastructure is used in research and um uh, uh we'll have the weekly update meeting so that everyone will meet uh, together every student will give an update on their project and the goal is to make sure uh, people are having progress yeah and uh so after the uh paper presentations all the following weeks we'll have weekly update meetings yeah and uh, 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 uh of course other than the weekly update meetings you should meet with your prof uh with your supervisors on a relatively um flexible basis you and your your you and your supervisors will arrange how you meet and when you meet and yeah the goal is to solve the technical issues uh with your uh, with your supervisors and yeah again the uh this does not replace the weekly update meeting where every student gives an update on their uh 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 gives a summary of the uh, progress and updates on their project. So the course, um, uh, we expect you uh, after this course, you will learn uh, the low level operation of DRAM trips and gain some hands-on experience on uh, DRAM characterization with FVGAs. You should be able to achieve the predefined goals of your project and you should be able to deliver your code as long as with your results and the analysis with uh, reasonable documentation. And finally, you will present your projects uh, to uh, our group. Yeah, and we will grade your um, uh, performance by both how you uh, complete um, the project, how you uh, make the presentation uh, as well as whether you are communicating well with us during the semester. So uh, now I will give a brief introduction to DRAM and DRAM Bender. So DRAM Bender is an uh, extensible and versatile FPGA-based infrastructure so that we can easily test modern DRAM chips. So uh, in a uh, more than system, uh, the DRAM-based memory system is organized as follows. We will first have a memory controller that usually already in uh, is integrated into the CPU, and it controls um, the DRAM-based main memory over the DDR interface. And uh, a memory controller controls a memory channel. Uh, on the channel, there uh, there physically can be uh, multiple DRAM modules. And on a DRAM module, there are many uh, DRAM chips. And uh, inside a DRAM chips, there are multiple uh, independent DRAM banks that can be independent, uh, that can operate independently uh, uh, with respect to other uh, DRAM banks in the same uh, chip. And these banks, they share the ch same chip level IO for the command address and uh, uh, and data. So inside a DRAM bank, we have many DRAM arrays. Uh, and the smallest unit uh, that uh, compose a, a, a DRAM array is called a DRAM mat. A DRAM mat is essentially a 2D array of uh, DRAM cells, and they are organized, or let's say, uh, uh, indexed by rows and columns. So, uh, 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 we can 
So when we want to access uh, DRAM, we always access uh, the DRAM cells at the row granularity. Um, uh, that is to say, uh, wh uh, whenever we want to access DRAM, uh, the entire uh, the entirety of a row of uh, uh, of DRAM cells will always be accessed. Uh, and then we will uh, read and write to certain columns uh, in this uh, DRAM row. So a row of uh, a row of DRAM uh, uh, is controlled by a word line as the uh, horizontal lines, uh, the horizontal uh, blue lines as shown here, uh, and column wise they are uh, connected by a vertical red line. It's called a uh, a bit line. And a word uh, a word line is um, driven by word line drivers and the bit line, they are connected to uh, a row of sense amplifiers that is responsible for uh, accessing the information stored in the DRAM cells. So a DRAM cell stores one bit of information in the form of electric charge in the capacitor uh, of the DRAM cell. The capacitor uh, is connected to the bit line controlled by an access transistor. The gate of the access transistor is controlled by the word line so that when a word line is enabled, the access transistor will connect the capacitor to the bit line and uh, when the word line is disabled, the capacitor is disconnected uh, from the bit line. So in order to access uh, 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 a DRAM cell, uh, we follow the following steps. So first, we will enable the word line. Uh, this connects the capacitor to the bit line and the electric charge stored in the capacitor will undergo a charge sharing process uh, with the bit line. And this causes a small deviation in the bit line voltage. And uh, this voltage will be uh, sensed by the sense amplifier uh, uh, and then the uh, sense amplifier uh, will also amplify this voltage uh, uh, difference. Uh, this basically uh, kind of converts the small analog-ish uh, signal stored in the capacitor of the DRAM cell into a full uh, strong digital signal. And, du and during this process, uh, these electric charge in the capacitor is also fully uh, restored. So uh, from, an, archi uh, from an, uh, an architecture point of view, uh, the, uh, the me uh, memory controller access DRAM as follows. So first, it will send an activate command along with a row address. Let's say the row address is R0. Then this will enable the word line of uh, R0 that will connect the uh, all the cells in R0 to the sense amplifiers. And once these uh, uh, the data of the cells in R0 are sensed in the, the sense amplifiers, the memory controller can issue a read command with a column address to access uh, specific data uh, in the row. Uh, and uh, once the uh, row the row is activated, multiple uh, read requests to the data stored in the same row can be uh, issued. And uh, once we have finished uh, accessing this row, uh, in order to access another row in the same bank, uh, the DRAM controller will issue a pre-charge command, which uh, uh, which dis uh, disables the word line of uh, R zero and also precharges uh, the uh, bit line to VDD over two, 
and also resets the sense amplifier so that we can uh, activate and access another row. Yeah. So um, uh, the latency of a row activation, or in other words, uh, the minimum time that uh, uh, the row must stay uh, open so that the sense amplification and charge restoration process can uh, be fully and correctly performed is TRS. So th uh, this means that you can only issue a pre-charge command to close the row, reset the sense amplifier, pre-charge the bit lines, only after TRS amount of time uh, after a previous activation command. And the latency for this pre-charge operation is TRP. This means that the activation uh, command must be issued TRP uh, amount of time after a previous pre-charge command in the same bank, of course. Yeah. So um, uh, as, uh, as we can see, because the entire process is very analog, uh, there are multiple factors that will affect DRAM reliability and latency. First is, of course, if we violate the uh, DRAM timing parameters, then there's no guarantee that the underlying process will uh, uh, be very stable and uh, reliable that will cause uh, potential errors or bit flips. Um, uh, and uh, another factor is called intercell interference because as uh, DRAM technology continue to scale down, uh, the physical distance between all the components in the DRAM array, they're getting smaller and smaller. And naturally the uh, interference among these components, they will increase. So, uh, uh, yeah, and like this noise will uh, affect DRAM uh, reliability and the access latency. And of course the, uh, the semiconductor ma uh, manufacturing process, it's not 100% accurate and this only gets worse as the technology node scales uh, down to much smaller node sizes and the process variation uh, will cause uh, uh, will result in di uh, different reliability uh, and performance levels of the components in the memory array and this is also another source of uh, uh, variations in reliability and latency. And since um, the uh, DRAM cell stores information in a capacitor, temperature will have a big impact on uh, how long the uh, DRAM cell can retain its information. And in general, uh, temperature also affects uh, transistor performance. And finally, um, uh, the voltage supply, uh, uh, of course, will affect the uh, performance of the transistors. So uh, uh, it will be very difficult to uh, model all of these uh, in simulation or uh, in an analytical model. And that's why it's uh, important to perform experimental characterization studies of real DRAM chips. So the goal of this um, uh, 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 project is to enable a DRAM testing infrastructure that allows experimental studies of real DRAM chips. So um, uh, uh, DRAM Bender is an open source FPGA-based testing infrastructure that is publicly available on our GitHub uh, re uh, repository. Uh, it's relatively low cost. It's just cons uh, consists of an uh, FPGA board with a uh, memory slot and the memory modules uh, under test. So here uh, we show two um, uh, uh, similar projects that uh, follows this uh, paradigm. On the left is SoftMC as the predecessor of DRAM Bender. And on the right is uh, the Litex tester, uh, where 
we can see the uh, FPGA uh, board and the DRAM modules under test. Um, so these uh, existing uh, works, SoftMC and uh, LightX, they impose restrictions uh, on how you communicate with the DRAM chip. As a result, uh, we can only do a limited um, DRAM characterization uh, experiments. Uh, these are relatively difficult to set up. So SoftMC is based on old uh, hardware and the Litex Rowhammer Taster, its FPG board is uh, a custom board. So you have to do the, like basically the manufacturing of the board of your own. Uh, and uh, especially SoftMC, they have a monolithic hardware design that makes extending the taster relatively difficult. So that's, uh, so here comes the design goal of DRAM Bender to overcome the uh, previous limitations. So first uh, it's flexible so that we can test any DRAM operation. We should be able to test any combination of DRAM uh, 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 operations, or in other words, any combination of, of DRAM commands and uh, with precise control of the timing parameters. Should be easy of uh, it. It should be easy to use. So, uh, DRAM Bender provides a simple program interface in C plus uh, plus, so that we can mi uh, minimize the amount of time spent on programming DRAM Bender itself. And as a result, it's accessible to a, a wide range of uh, users, even to those without a lot of experience in uh, FPGA and hardware design. So. Uh, DRAM Bender is, 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 is also modular. So it has well-defined interface between hardware modules so that it can be extended to uh, other DRAM standards, let's say. So here is an uh, example uh, of uh, a DRAM Bender-based uh, DRAM characterization uh, infrastructure. Uh, it consists of an FPGA board uh, with DRAM Bender programmed a DRAM module under test, and it's uh, connected to, to 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 the host machine, which is just a regular PC uh, through PCIe. Uh, and here we uh, we also connect a temperature controller to the uh, DRAM module under test, so so, uh, so that we can change temperature. And we we also have a uh, uh, a power supply that we uh, can change uh, the VPP voltage uh, of the DRAM chip. So um, uh, here are the uh, uh, different uh, prototypes that we have successfully deployed uh, uh, DRAM Bender 2. So as you can see, we can uh, work on many different uh, boards that uh, with uh, uh, memory slots for different uh, form factors. We can have DDR for DIMMs, saw dims and even hbm too so with DRAM bender uh we can uh we we uh we perform three case uh studies first we um uh we study how uh the uh interleaving of the activations to the aggressor rows um uh, affect the uh, row hammer vulnerability of DRAM chips. Uh, second, we test um, how does the data pattern affect uh, the number of bit flips we can achieve with row hammer. Uh, and third, we uh, test uh, the feasibility of in DRAM bitwise uh, operations with commercially off the chip real DDR4 DRAM chips. So this shows that DRAM Bender is flexible. It supports many different types of uh, real DRAM experiments. So yeah, uh, in next week, uh, when we introduce the 
amount uh, the list of available projects to you, uh, to you, you will have a much uh, wider understanding of the capabilities of DRAM vendor. Um, uh, DRAM vendor has an easy to use C++ API. Basically, you just append commands to uh, a DRAM vendor program uh, as if you are writing an assembly code uh, in DRAM. So this um, um, allows us to devise new experiments for new insights easily. So we have more uh, detailed technical introduction of DRAM Bender in the paper, including the uh, hardware design details, the instruction set architecture, uh, the program interface, the the uh, the detailed results and some future work and experiments. So here is uh, the extended version of our paper uh, on archive. If you're interested, you can uh, scan the QR code and take a deeper look. So here are an uh, ongoing list of projects that we uh, uh, worked on with uh, uh, DRAM Bender. And next, uh, I would uh, uh, I will discuss the Rollpress project in a bit more detail because it's the most recent one, and and it actually uncovers another redisturbance phenomenon other than Rowhammer. So uh, we know that uh, in Rowhammer, uh, you need to f uh, f repeatedly uh, activating and closing the aggressors. Uh, as much as possible to induce bit fips. But in row press, we find that uh, if you keep a DRAM row open for a long period of time, uh, it can also cause bit fips in adjacent rows. So these bit fips do not require many aggressor activations. And we find that in extreme cases, if you activate the row only once, uh, it's enough to cause bit fips. So here is a uh, figurative illustration of the, uh, row hammer and row press. So on top, you have to open and close the row hammer aggressor row repeatedly and very frequently. But in row press, you just keep the aggressor open for a longer period of time. So for example, uh, in um, one of the DRAM chips we characterize, we find that uh, for row hammer, um, you need 47k activations to induce uh, bit fips. But with row press, let's say if you keep every DRAM row open for 7.8 microseconds, you only need 5k activations to induce bit fips. So we have more uh, uh, a very detailed uh, experimental characterization and real system demonstration of row press uh, detailed in our paper. And we also open source the source code uh, of the DRAM vendor program we use to characterize Rowpress, as well as the real system demonstration code that can induce bit flips while Rowhammer cannot uh, on a, a real DDR4 based system, even uh, with the target role, uh, target role refresh uh, already implemented in the DRAM chips. Uh, and these are all uh, open source and fully artifact evaluated uh, uh, on GitHub. Yeah, and uh, we also won the best artifact award at ISCA 2023. So here are more uh, research that were based on uh, or uh, enabled by uh, DRAM Bender from other groups. So if you, you're interested, you can also take a look. And in summary, we introduced uh, DRAM Bender. It's the first publicly available DDR4 characterization infrastructure. It's flexible, it's easy to use, and it's fully open source on uh, on GitHub. And DRAM Bender enables many studies, ideas, and method uh, methodologies in the design of future memory systems. So yeah, that's the end of the introduction to uh, DRAM Bender, and also the end of the uh, uh, our first meeting uh, in this semester. So if you don't have any question, um, yeah, I guess then that's the end uh, of this meeting then.
Mm, no more questions. Okay. Uh, maybe. Uh, okay. So then. Uh. Great. Uh. So we will send out an. Uh. Ah. Okay. I see. So you said what's the low level hacking you said in the beginning? Yeah. So um, it's a like it's like a. Uh, I wouldn't say it's very something very specific, but it's like kind of the mindset that you're willing to dig deep into the low level operation of DRAM uh, to understand why something is happening or something is not happening, and also be able to think low level uh, uh, on potential unconventional techniques that might be able to uh, help you achieve uh the go let's say yeah you might want to hack the dram operation by violate some timing parameters and these uh violated timing parameters might cause the low level dram operations to deviate from uh the regular operation that might cause some other uh effects uh, uh compared to the uh, normal operation. So if you uh, want some example, I can recommend you to uh, three, uh, three papers. I will uh, type it in the chat. It's AMBIT, SIM DRAM, and Compute DRAM. So these three papers, they, uh, they basically repurpose the operation uh, of the sense amplifier or how we read data from the DRAM so that we can perform a uh, logical computation directly with the DRAM cells. So they, uh, the way they do it is they uh, violate the DRAM timing parameters so that the sense amplifier does something else other than just reads the value from the DRAM cell. So yeah, if you want to gain some, some example, like just search for these three papers and you'll have a solid understanding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I hope this uh, uh, understands. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I hope this solves your uh, question. Okay, great. So yeah, thanks for the question. And I think if there are no further question, then yeah, that's the end of our meeting. And yeah, see you next week.